Hi, this is Renee from Zesty and yesterday I had the pleasure of speaking to the Access Trainer Network in The Hague in the Netherlands and I am recording this for those that were there if they want to recap and anyone that wasn't able to make it who'd like the information and there may be other people watching it as well, so hi. <laughs> this is what's called a screencast for those who aren't familiar with that. So I am playing the slides, which I use Google Slides on my computer. I've purchased a program called ScreenFlow, but there are other tools that you can use. And I am using an iMac computer and I have a Samsung external microphone to hopefully make the sound a little bit clearer. But I will go through these slides, so I hope that it's a little bit more interactive for you than just reading through the slide deck, uh, but that's available as well with some links. So this overview is to try and make social media as simple as possible. And one format of making anything that you want to try and understand better simple is using the good old who, what, why, when, where and how. So let's look at social media through that lens. Who am I? So I am a social media consultant, trainer and coach. I have run my business Zesty, Z-E-S-T-E-E -E, in Australia first and now in the Netherlands. I've actually run it uh, half half in each, four years first in Australia and four years now in the Netherlands. And I love to help uh, mostly small businesses I've worked with, but some larger organizations as well to simplify their social media. And in general, I mostly look at strategy, which is the kind of overview of how and why and which tools you should use. The exact how, and we'll come to this later, is pretty easy to work out once you know the bigger picture and you know um, why you're using the tools and your bigger level goals. I'm a Dutch Australian, so that's me and my handsome six foot six tall Dutch husband who I met when he was backpacking in Australia. I started a blog, which is a personal blog called Dutch Australian com um, I have to look this up I think about five years ago now and growing communities is something I'm really passionate about and things like this that started as a personal blog now has a Facebook community of over 2,000 and I really enjoy getting to know people and engaging with the community and I also love how they help each other on there but I hold both passports and I live uh, we've settled now long term in the Netherlands in The Hague I'm a proud parent, they're my two little girls who are about to turn seven and nine. And when I was a new parent, I started the Professional Parents Network in Australia to try and bring together other people like me that were trying to balance business and family. And back then, Facebook wasn't yet so um, huge and popular and it was kind of difficult to find other parents that were in a similar situation. So I started running live physical events and built a live community and then that also grew simultaneously online. Uh, I still have the Facebook page, I have a group just for the Netherlands and I write a blog. I don't do it as often as I would like, but I try to post there about balancing work and family and I've interviewed parents all around the world who do that. With my two gorgeous girls, I've also started two other blogs or communities because you can look at blogs as the core of a community or a website and that's Culture and Kids and the Kids English Club. So it's through growing all these communities that I've got my experience of working with social media and I'd love to share it with others. I also am a university lecturer. That's me at the Hague University of Applied Sciences teaching recently. I did a um, digital trends workshop for the branding uh, trends minor for students who are in the IBMS, that's the International Business and Management Studies four year bachelor's program. I teach e-business there and marketing and branding and those kind of topics. I love it. Uh, I've been there heading up to two years now, actually. And to teach here in the Netherlands, you need a master's. So I'm simultaneously working on my master's, my bachelor's, my own bachelor's. I did through Open Universities Australia, and that's in marketing and tourism. And now I'm studying a master's in international communication management um, part time. So the way that I like to share my knowledge is both online and in person. And I look at it from all different angles. So both from the, the academic side from through my work, but very practically, because I've run my own business and my own social media for many years now. So I know what it's like to be particularly a one person running your own show. There's a lot to do. 
And finally, as if that's not enough, a few hours a week, I am the editor and the community manager at The Hague Online. I've done this for two years now. Billy owns this website and I spend, uh, like I said, a few hours a week putting news and events online. And I have a great team that I work with that run the social media. And our goal there is to share news and information with the international community in, in The Hague and surrounds, uh, all in English. But again, it's another experience of growing and building a community, and it's that experience I'd like to share. So after all of that, you may be feeling a little overwhelmed, uh, but I would like you to try and guess my secret superpower. How is it that I can manage to do all of these things and still say, stay sane? Well, one secret is I'm not always sane. <laughs> it's, it's sometimes very, very hard work. In fact, a lot of the time. But my secret superpower is the fact that I know how to use social media really well. I can keep all these communities running with not a huge amount of time because I know which tools to use, I know how to use them, and I know how to connect with people online. I also know how to combine that with um, interactions offline, but mainly we're focusing on in online here with social media. So my secret superpower and one that I know that you all have potential to have, if not already developing your own superpower, is to be able to use social media well. So who are you in the live workshop? I asked everybody to share a little bit about themselves and um, the challenges and the things they like about social media and want to learn. And I had the pleasure of having a lot of these people in the room. You can go and have a look at the Access website in the Netherlands if you're watching this online and uh, you're not directly connected, I highly recommend it. And for those of you who are the trainers, you know each other, but I also recommend go and have a look at the social media that all of your fellow trainers are using because one of the biggest tips I can give is support each other. You can share to your own community, but by sharing and promoting each other, that's a really powerful thing. <clears throat> So we talked about what you'd like to learn and, and what the challenges are when we're in the live workshop, but uh, what it came down to is, uh, let me think of a few off the top of my head, were things like trying to juggle it all when you're a um, ZZ pay, as we call it in the Netherlands, and uh, which tools to use and, and should you use these, why not, why. And if you've got any um, specific things you'd like to learn or challenges yourself, you're most welcome to get in touch with me and let me know. And I'll um, see if this presentation hasn't already answered those, whether I can point you in the right direction for some other resources. So what is social media exactly? I won't play this now within the screencast that I'm doing, but recommend going and having a look at this YouTube video. And it gives you the core of what social media uh, trends are happening. At the moment, it's all about mobile. You, you need to be able to communicate with people and understand that a, a massive percentage of people now are accessing things on their mobile devices. And the real basic definition of social media is a digital tool that is two-way, so you can have conversations. The very first websites, for example, were just a lot of text. You couldn't really talk to the company through their website. But now with Facebook, Twitter, and all these other tools we'll talk about, they open the potential for a two-way conversation between the uh, business and the customer or potential customer. But highly recommend going and just checking out that video. Another reminder is that social media is just a tool and tools change. People that I talk to are feeling a little bit um, overwhelmed by social media regularly and need to just remember um, that, yeah, that it's just something that you use to do a task. So if you know what it is that you're trying to do, um, remember these old typewriters? I'm actually old enough, not quite for that one, but I remember having typewriters at school where we had to really push down with our fingers. And now Facebook, Twitter, all these things, sure, they're, they're tools that take a little while to learn, but they're just tools to achieve things that we want to achieve in our business. And what that really comes down to always has, and I hope always will be, is relating to people, communicating with people and building relationships. This also wasn't so long ago, how we blocked people in the 1980s. So um, things just change so fast these days. It means that you have to keep up with the knowledge, but social media itself can help you do that as well. 
another bit of a joke in the 16th century social media about sending messages. So just to remind you and really, if you can remember one thing about social media, it's that it is just sending messages to people. It's just that you can send messages to a massive amount of people at one time. It's not just one message in a bottle now. Your message also has to stand out because there are millions of messages in bottles now on the beach. <laughs> so how to get people to pick up your message is, is, is another trick as well. But um, we'll focus now on the tools. And yet another, uh, another way to look at things is that each particular social media tool can achieve a different function. So relating to how the desk setup used to be, we still use some of these things and relating it back to social media. Why would you use social media? Some people are jumping on board just because everybody else does and that may or may not work for you. I think it's an extension of your own personality. I'm a, I've always been a very, very social person and love communicating with people. But the way I see it is that social media skills are your passport to the new world. So some people like traveling a bit more than others, but most of us, if we ever want to go overseas, you have to have a passport. So to relate that back to social media skills by learning what these tools are, what they can do and how they can help you in your business, then you've kind of got your passport and you're ready to go. If you're a beginner, so on the left hand side here, the need to know basics, even if you don't use things regularly, they're a core part of communication. So if you know what they are and what they're capable of, then that's a good place to start. And if you're a more advanced user, I'd really like to encourage you to understand the power and capabilities these tools have to make your job easier. And there's an undeniable trend towards learning um, social media skills. So if you feel quite comfortable with these tools, look around you because there'll be people in your circle of friends or colleagues that aren't as comfortable as you. So sometimes just a little bit of a chat with them can help them um, help them become more comfortable. A few reasons I love social media personally is that it's about all the things that are my own core values, which are connecting and sharing and community and having conversations and collaborating. You've got a lot of choice now about who you communicate with. It's, you're not limited as much by the geographical um, location anymore. You can chat to someone on the other side of the world or on the other side of the city or next door. You can create stuff. It's a very creative um, tool. You can create communities, for example, and it's a way to maintain relationships. You see a lot of negative things about how social media and technology is, is um, taking us further apart. You know, you see these classic pictures of people all looking at their smartphone, but I think particularly for expats like myself that are not living in our native country and are far from family and, um, and some of our friends, it's a wonderful way to maintain relationships, but it also, as a business owner, gives you a way to maintain relationships with your customers in a way that's um, manageable. It's not about selling, selling, selling. Think about how much you would like someone to really push products and services. But that said, don't be shy to build up your own professional digital presence and participate. So have conversations and don't only just drop into a Facebook group, for example, to tell them when you've got something available, but participate in conversations on, over the long term. Figure out what's your why. Why do you want to use social media? Because it is a bit of a rabbit hole. You can get lost. You can be in there forever. When? So technology curve. So when should you use social media? Um, the point I wanted to make with this is that this is a technology innovation ad adoption life cycle that's used in, um, in various uh, um, fields. The innovators, the early adopters, the early majority are all pretty much using social media now and the late majority and the laggards are joining, but there are very few people who aren't using social media at least to take a look at it lately. So now is the time that if you're not already uh, comfortable on it, now is the time to learn. In terms of times of day of when to use it, this is something um, that came up yesterday in the workshop. You can find tools that tell you the best times to post. 
Um, I don't use them a lot because I think that they're pretty skewed in terms of how they measure things. For example, at The Hague Online, we send out a newsletter at 10 a.m. every uh, Thursday morning. And my statistics will tell me that, oh, the best time for you to post stuff online is at 10 a.m. on a Thursday morning. But I know that's because that's when I send out the newsletter. So you can have quite a bit of control over this. But there are a lot of statistics that will help you. Where? So where should you be online? This link here, uh, both at Wikipedia and eBiz um, MBA, show you the tools that are the most popular ones at the moment. And I will go through uh, the ones that I'm using fairly regularly and recommend for businesses. Another f funny, funny way to look at things, social media explained with beer. Each particular tool is a different way of saying something. It's a different way of having a conversation. Don't feel you have to be on all of them. Understand what they do. See if they help you meet your business goals. Social media is also often about me, 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 me. But if you do it right, it's about having conversations with people. So Facebook, it's the largest and most popular platform. I recommend that all organizations should have a page. One of the biggest mistakes starters uh, make is by setting up a profile for your business. Don't do that because it's against the Facebook terms and conditions. And I've written a blog post about this. If you want more information, you can ask me. But a business cannot have friends. Remember also on Facebook that Facebook's so crowded these days that not all followers will see your posts. So don't be afraid to uh, repost uh, regularly. YouTube is owned by Google and it's a great place to have a home base for your videos. People also use it as a search engine. So people are typing in things to YouTube all the time. So remember to, to put search terms in there. Video is huge and it's predicted to continue to dominate online the way that we consume content. And there is another um, channel and platform that you can use, which is Vimeo. Twitter, I love Twitter. I didn't used to, it took me a while to get used to. But it's a really cool way to interact with big brands, not-for-profits, businesses, journalists, government, um, police, celebrities. You'll find if you're not yet using Twitter, it's worth at least setting up an account and learning some basics. And it's a good way to learn about news. Each of these tools, I'm not going to go into any depth about how to use them, just that you should be at least considering them. And each platform will have its own about section. LinkedIn is a bit like Facebook for professionals. I think that anyone that is a trainer or a coach should have a LinkedIn profile and it's a way to build your network personally and professionally. Pinterest has lots of pretty pictures. It's grown to include more text. Uh, you can pin directly from websites. So it's like having a notice board and just cutting and pasting from the internet and um, keeping things all in one place. It's a bit of a surprise entrance in the social media top 10. I've had a social media top 10 for probably six, seven years now. And it's one of the, the kind of newer ones. It's still been around for a few whiles, uh, for a while. I don't use it personally too much. If you need to focus, as I'll talk about later, and, and focus on tools, for me, it's one that I can quite comfortably drop. But for the creative people, it, it's uh, something that's really visual as well. You might like to take a look. It's big enough to warrant a bit of time to, to check it out. Your website is your home base. I love WordPress, which is why I put the WordPress logo there and I've built all of my own websites. And the question of a website and a blog, um, I will answer very quickly here and just say that I think every website should have a blog and a, a blog itself these days can be a website. I've written posts about this as well if you want more information about that. But the point I want to make here in this quick presentation is that it should be your home base and you should push out information onto the social media and draw them back to your website. Instagram can only be used on a mobile device. There are ways that you can schedule things online and use it on a desktop computer, but it's designed to be mobile. It's now owned by Facebook and it's just a very visual uh, tool to, to use. And again, it's big enough to warrant a look if you're not yet using it. Google Plus is competition to Facebook, but it's not quite taken off. Um, but Google's too big to ignore, so it's worth a look. And if you are a location-based business, it's absolutely crucial you have a look at it because it's tied 
to Google services such as Places and having a YouTube account means you kind of automatically get a Google Plus account. They're trying to push you towards using it, but most people I know are still on Facebook. Um, but let's say Facebook closed down tomorrow for whatever reason, I think a lot of people would shift to Google Plus. It does have those capabilities. Snapchat is one of the latest ones. Uh, that's the younger demographic. I'm not using it very often at the moment, but the way I tackle new tools, of which there are there's thousands and thousands of new apps and tools, and you can bet that six months from now, a year from now, or, or into the future, there will be lots of new ones coming out. The way I do it is I ignore most of them until I hear about three different people mention it, and then I think, oh, that's worth checking out. I also use services such as Social Media Examiner. They have lots of podcasts and they tell you about all the new tools coming out. So you can have a look at that and listen to that. It comes back to, again, your goals. Who are you trying to reach and why? So that was a very quick summary of the main social media channels that I focus on. You can't do everything, so I tend to ignore most of the other stuff and just focus on, on the, those ones broadly. And the main ones I use personally are Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Um, a bit of YouTube and the others I keep an eye on, but um, they're the ones I recommend looking at. How to do it? The how you can work out once you've done your strategy. I will email all the participants that were there yesterday and any of the other trainers a social media strategy template so that you can do up a written document because having that gives you a core place to have your strategy. It's easy to spend days and days online and forget why you even came there in the first place. So if you write down some of your top goals in this written strategy, it will help you get some focus. It will also keep all the important information in one place. So it's very common that you'll sign up for one account, then you'll forget your password, then you'll forget you've even got the account. So if you get into the habit of saying, yes, I have a social media strategy for my business and all the information is in this social media strategy document, that will uh, really make a difference in how you run your online, um, your online world for your business. Benchmarking and collaboration are two other tips that I can give when you're at, you know, the actual how to do things. Often people ask, how's the best way to do this or that? And the answer is that often you don't really know it until you try. But the way that you can learn is by looking at what others are doing well and thinking about how can I apply this to my situation and would that work? Look at your own industry, but also in others. Collaboration is awesome. It's all about collaboration and conversations. Look for a couple of people around you, a couple of friends um, within the Access Trainers. I highly recommend you work with each other. Follow each other on, on Twitter and Facebook and whichever channels you choose to use. And if you support each other there and start having the conversations, that will grow and collaborate with people. For example, look for a complimentary product or service and cross post on each other's pages and, and grow your businesses together. Lots of apps and tools out there that can help you get more efficient on social media. So Hootsuite, Buffer, I use Evernote and Dropbox, I love them. Uh, Google Docs as well, I sync across devices. And another topic I speak regularly about and am really passionate about is e-learning. There's a lot to learn. So if you use e-learning um, tools, there's, there's Skillshare, Udemy, I've got another whole presentation if you wanna look at that. But what it comes down to is learning online quickly how to learn about new tools and um, and how to work more efficiently. Hootsuite and Buffer are social media dashboards where you can cross post across several channels in one go. In theory, it's great if you can't run all your channels like Twitter and, and Facebook and all of those, then it may help make things quicker and easier. But there's also the con that you may be starting conversations, but not actually around to answer. Worth a look if you're an intermediate to advanced social media user. If not, ignore them for now. But once you start setting up different channels, worth having a look at, at, at these. So in summary, I was going to ask the group yesterday, it was supposed to be a fairly quick conversation. We had a very in-depth conversation. 
Um, but I would like you to think about what are the three most important things right now. Grab a piece of paper and a pen and write down what are the most three important things you've got from this um, presentation or screencast. And remember, this is a phrase I live by. I wrote a blog post about it a while ago in regards to social media, but I think it applies to life as well. Frenzy is the way that our life is these days. Everybody seems to be busy, busy, crazy, crazy, busy. Everything's a frenzy. This presentation gave you a heap of tools, a heap of information. Everything's a frenzy. It will absolutely make you tired. You'll be fatigued because there is no way that we can keep up with everything. Even someone that lives and breathes social media as I do, there is no way I can keep up with every single channel and do all these things that some of the so-called experts say, you must post three times a day on Facebook and you must do this. You, it, it's tiring, you cannot do everything. So my tip is to just focus. Keep going back to what is my goal today? What is my goal this month? and only you know what that goal is. It might be to get new clients, it might be to just get a presence, it might be to become known as an expert, but focus on just one or two, or probably I'd say up to five core goals at any one given time, and do the same with your platforms. You can set up a presence on, on different platforms, but you can even put a, 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 a kind of a post, a pinned post at the top, Let's say that you set up a Twitter account, you don't wanna use it for now. You can just say, thanks for finding me on Twitter, uh, for those that, that are Twitter users. Um, I'm not active here at the moment, but I'd love to chat to you. Please come across to my website, something like that. But just focus your energy somewhere because even when you're an energetic, social media loving person like me, you can't do it all. So pick a few things. So frenzy, fatigue, focus. I hope that's been helpful. I'd love to hear from you. I am looking up at setting up later this year or early next year a uh, social media mentor group where I will work with uh, a small group of small business owners over a couple of months to help you overcome any challenges that you're having, uh, to support each other and, and um, build our social media presence and, and our business success. So you can find me at uh, Zesty. I... Uh, I'm on, of course, nearly every major social media channel, so you can find me, Renee Veldman Tentori. But together, let's make social media simple. There's so much information and so many platforms and so much time spent on social media, but let's remember to keep coming back and making it simple. Good luck.